Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about using floats and displays in CSS. Now, float and display allow you to change the way that elements are displayed and interact with other elements on your website. So over here, I just have this unordered list and it's basically just like a navigation list on my website, right? So this could be maybe a navigation list uh, that we would use to get around our website. And then down here, I have just some text and it's just text inside of a paragraph. And this unordered list, I gave some styling to, so I gave it a light blue color, gave it some padding, and then I set the margin equal to zero. I wanna to talk to you guys about the float property first. And this is a property that allows you to take elements on your page and float them to different sides of the page. And when you float an element, all of the elements that are around it are going to flow around it. So they'll sort of like wrap around it. And this will basically allow us to take this navigation list right here and have the text be next to it. So. If I came over here in my style, I could say float, and I can give this one of three values. The first value is none, and this will just leave it as the default, so it won't give it any sort of float value. And I can give it left, or I can give it right. So let's give it left, and you'll see here what's gonna happen is this list item is going to come over and float off to the left side of the screen, and then this text will wrap around it. So now this element is considered a floating element. So it's like a floating list. And I could also say, instead of floating to the left, let's float it off to the right. So, you know, one of the biggest use cases for this would be doing something like this. So you could have like a navigation list that's floated off to the left or to the right, and then the text would wrap around it. Or a lot of people will use this with images. So maybe you have, you could have like an image right here, and then you could have your text um, sort of displaying around it just like this. And you can see that this text will wrap. So if I was to, you know, like make this text a lot bigger, I could save it and you'll see that it'll wrap around this element. And, and depending on which float value that I give this, it'll wrap around on either the right side or on the left side. So floats can be a really good way to set up your page like this. You can also just use floats to generally position things on different sides of the screen. So if you want certain elements to be on the left side of the screen and certain elements to be on the right side of the screen, you can use floats to do that. Another thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the display property. And the display property is another property in HTML and it defines how your elements are displayed. And there's two basic types of displays in HTML. The first type of display is called block, and this will display all of your elements in a block format. So actually, I'm just gonna get rid of this float here so I can illustrate this. And you'll notice that when I stopped floating this element, that all of a sudden this list now takes up the entire width of the screen. And this text also takes up the entire width of the screen. So if I make this page bigger, no matter what, it's always gonna take up all of the room that it has. And that's because these elements are by default block elements. And a block element will take up an entire block on the page. And a block is just like, you know, a line of the page. So this element is taking up this entire section of the page. I can't by default wrap this text next to it. So this navigation list might only need like this much space, but it's taking up as much space as possible. And that's because it's a block element. So when you display elements using the block attribute or the block value, then they're gonna take up like an entire line or an entire section on the web page. The other type of value that we can use is a value called inline. And certain elements by default in HTML are block elements like paragraphs or unordered list, but other elements are inline elements by default. So one of the most common is called a span. So I can create a span tag and inside of the span tag, we could just type out like a list. So we could say like item one, whatever. And I could make another span tag here right next to it, or maybe we'll put it below it. We could call this item two. And now when I refresh this page, you'll notice that item one and item two are showing up next to each other. So instead of showing up in their own like separate line, like we did with this paragraph and with this unordered list, 
they're just showing up next to each other. So an inline element will only take up as much, as much space as it needs. And so you can use these inline elements like span to create, for example, like a horizontal list or just to have items be next to each other. And you can also control this display property manually inside of our CSS. So I'll show you an example. Imagine that we wanted this uh, list of items here to display horizontally. So we wanted this to be instead of a vertical list where the items are listed one on top of the other, we wanted it to be a horizontal list where they're next to each other. So we could use this to like, you know, build a navigation page. Well, you know, like I said before, these list items in this unordered list are by default using the block display property. So they're not gonna be able to display next to each other because they're taking up an entire line. But I can actually modify these so I can say style and we can give these a display of inline. So now these are gonna display just like those spans that we, created earlier. So they're going to display next to each other. And I'll just make all of these in line. And now when I refresh the page, you'll see that instead of having a vertical list, we now have a horizontal list. So all of these are just located next to each other. So that's a, an easy way to make like a horizontal list in CSS. You can also use a, another display property called none. And so what none will do is it'll actually get rid of the element on the page so it won't display it. So now this home and this about should disappear because we're not displaying them anymore. So that's sort of the basics of using display. And like I said, the two main types of displays in HTML are block and inline. So different elements by default are gonna use different, either or they're gonna use either a block or they're gonna use inline. Um, over here on this uh, w3schools.com webpage, and this is a really great place to go if you wanna just get some general CSS reference. And if you scroll down on this uh, page, you'll see that there's a bunch of different values for blocks or for display properties. So we have inline here, we have block, and these are the two like default values and they're two really popular values. There's also this one flex down here and I'm gonna make an entire video just talking about the flex display property. But you can see here, I mean, there's probably like a couple dozen of these display properties. And so in addition to just using block and inline, you want to, you might want to consider playing around with all of these different display properties and seeing what they do. You can create really complex layouts and displays on your website just by having a good knowledge of what all of these display properties do. So your homework for this lesson is to head over here and it's just, w3schools.com forward slash CSS ref forward slash PR underscore class underscore display. Head over here and play around with these different display properties and see if you can figure out what each one of them does. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.